After the death of Oliver Cromwell, the Stuarts, who escaped to France, were asked back. So uh, Charles II returned to England. He was uh, celebrated and there was basically a very big support popular support for the Stuart dynasty, for the king himself. Uh, he was a dashing young man when he returned from exile. He was exactly 30 years old and uh, he um, grew up in France, so he knew a lot about the sophistication of the French court and he decided to bring some of this glamour back to England. So the period of restoration, so the return of the Stuart, uh, uh, of the Stuart uh, dynasty uh, with uh, Charles II, James II and then two daughters of uh, Charles, Mary and Anne, uh, we have the period of, um, of uh, revival, revival of the arts, revival of the sciences, revival of literature. Uh, we basically have the very um, glorious and splendid moment presided over by this new king who was popularly referred to as the Merry Monarch. So the Merry Monarch, Charles the second, a party loving man, uh, the, uh, the man at the head of a splendid court with lots of beautiful women, most of whom were in love with him and uh, he would favour them, he would uh, actually dote on the illegitimate children he had with them. Uh, the only problem was that he didn't have any children, legitimate children, with his wife, Queen Catherine of Braganza, a Portuguese princess from the royal family of Portugal. Uh, she is credited for bringing the custom of tea drinking to England. So this is the beginning when we have the beginning of tea drinking in the second half of the 17th century. First at the royal court, then the aristocracy. By the 18th century you'll have everybody drinking tea and Britain involved in a large-scale importing um, business, uh, um, bringing tea and all kinds of tea paraphernalia from China. So uh, here we have uh, the Queen, um, here we have uh, uh, also all the beautiful ladies or some of the beautiful ladies of the royal court portrayed by Peter Lilly. So here we have Peter Lilly making a great comeback with the portrait of the king and his uh, beautiful ladies of the court. Uh, we have basically a collection. The king collected or kind of ordered the portraits of uh, the beautiful courtiers to be made uh, and displayed in uh, uh, Windsor Castle. They start using Windsor Castle uh, after uh, after the fire, of course, um, so uh, we have the whole gallery, the gallery of beauties, the Windsor beauties, and uh, these are glamorous aristocratic women who look very sensuous, uh, who look uh, quite sexy with uh, beautiful uh, shoulders and uh, decolletage and uh, uh, you may want to google it, um, the Windsor beauties, even the Wikipedia page has all the names and all the uh, all the backgrounds of these ladies. Um, the one in the uh, upper left is the uh, the main mistress, the long time mistress of the king Barbara Villiers. She was like the leader of the court. She had multiple children with the king and he was a good man. He, he, he really was a kind of kind man, not a tyrant like, uh, like um, Henry. The eighth. Uh, we have some more ladies. Basically, um, they uh, they were all in love with the king. We have uh, uh, probably um, the most famous uh, woman. Uh, some more uh, some more images here by Peter Lilly uh, from the Windsor Beauties. Uh, Nell Gwynn. 
this uh, common woman, a uh, London fruit seller, who was elevated uh, by the king to the position of prominence and wealth. Uh, apparently, he thought about her on his deathbed and he made his courtiers promise that she would lack for nothing. Uh, after he died. Some of the portraits, like this portrait of Margaret Hughes, show quite uh, a racy elements. So you can see a, a naked breast of one of these ladies. So uh, this is really a time of, uh, uh, of um, pleasure, of seduction, of uh, balls. This is the moment when women really uh, start to be influential in the society, especially the rich aristocratic women. They are not playthings of the king. They are his um, friends and they have significant uh, influence uh, in the society. Um, we have uh, the probably the first or, or one of the most uh, successful early female painters in Britain called Mary, Mary Beale and we have uh, some portraits by her uh, as you can see especially the portrait of the uh, actress Moll Davis it kind of sh tries to follow um, Peter Lilly who in turn tries to follow uh, Van Dyke probably but we also have the self-portrait by Mary Beale and the portrait of a uh, um, quite successful uh, a writer, a female writer, Afra Ben. So um, she wrote plays uh, and the plays were staged in, in London. So we have uh, beautiful, successful, influential women and also professional women writing painting, playing at the theatre. This is something that was not allowed uh, um, during the Tudor time. So um, in Shakespeare's, in original Shakespeare's uh, uh, stagings of his uh, plays, um, as you know hopefully, uh, all roles were played by men. With the restoration we start having actresses, so glamorous women playing female roles, at last you may say. Um, we have uh, some more beautiful women by a French artist, Henri Gascar. Uh, so um, uh, some of the courtiers, the one in the middle, uh, Louise, Duchess of Portsmouth, uh, she was given the English title by, by the king, but she was French uh, and uh, she was supposed to be this kind of Catholic spy and uh, a big rival to Nell Gwynn and there are all kinds of stories of, uh, uh, of Nell Gwynn protesting when people uh, mistakenly thought she was, uh, she was the Duchess of Portsmouth and, and she would say, no, no, good people, I'm not the French whore, I am the English whore, leave me in peace, and they would. So, um, and then it all ends with the death of uh, King Charles II uh, uh, and uh, because he had no legitimate children there were some attempts to install one of his illegitimate sons but the rebellion didn't really um, succeed so his younger brother James II, the former uh, Prince of York took the throne. Uh, here we have uh, him uh, by the next um, successful court portraitist, Sir Godfrey Neller. Godfrey Neller, so we have, we have some names really uh, by, uh, by then, but they are mostly portrait painters, so we'll meet the first proper English painter next week. And uh, here we have Godfrey Neller's uh, uh, portrait of King James II and his second wife, Queen Mary of Modena. Um, the first one died young. She was an English, uh, an English uh, noblewoman. Uh, they had uh, um, two daughters but uh, they waited for a son very very long time and it was known that King James II was uh, a Catholic. He um, converted to Catholicism in France and he was very very stubborn about not 
changing his religion to Protestantism. Uh, so he was much less, I would say, diplomatic in this way than Charles the uh, the second. Uh, so uh, when uh, Queen Mary of Modena finally gave birth to a boy called James, of course, and it was certain that this boy would be uh, would be brought up to be a Catholic. The Parliament said enough is enough, and uh, they uh, deposed the king. So basically, the king was forced to abdicate in favor of his elder daughter. Mary um, the second, Mary Stuart, and her Protestant husband, William the third, William of Orange, a Dutch prince. Uh, so the, Mary was already married and, and she was a very staunch Protestant. There was no danger of establishing a Catholic dynasty. Uh, the uh, glorious revolution started, so there was uh, a short military conflict, not as bloody by far as the civil war. The king was finally uh, forced to abdicate and to move to France with his uh, wife and their baby son James. They would later in the 18th century try to reclaim the throne, especially uh, the young James who would go down in history as the old pretender because his son later on would become the young pretender. Uh, also called the Bonnie Prince Charlie, but we'll talk about him later on. So here we have uh, Sir Godfrey Nella and Peter Lilly continuing their beautiful careers of court um, portraits with two young dashing ro royals, King William III and Queen Mary II. This is an earlier portrait before she was uh, she was crowned, but uh, here we have this uh, young Stuart uh, couple. As I said, the first time ever that we have the couple reigning together as equals, as partners. One of the uh, main residences that they used was Hampton Court, the old palace of the Tudors, uh, but they uh, rebuilt it, they added an entire wing to this, uh, uh, to this palace uh, and the man, the new architect responsible for this was Christopher Wren, Sir Christopher Wren. He would be the greatest architect of the late 17th and early 18th century and uh, Hampton Court extension, uh, the south facade, facade the south um, wing was really his, uh, his uh, one of his greatest commissions. Not the greatest, you'll see it uh, later on. The greatest would be St. Paul's Cathedral in London, rebuilt or completely changed after the fire. So um, they um, did not really support painters so much. They had Godfrey Nella and uh, and P Peter Lilly before she, uh, he died, so basically they, they continue with that. Uh, the later Stuarts are not really the, the greatest time for painting. We have some foreign artists coming, like Antonio Verio, an Italian, uh, and uh, he was uh, commissioned to decorate the inside of the new extension of Hampton court palace and this is the uh, beautiful um, beautiful uh, design that he uh, that he had for the banqueting hall there so this uh, um, sumptuous dining room uh, with uh, an a complicated allegory, Minerva, with astronomy, music, poetry, architecture, sculpture and painting. So we have the goddess of, uh, of um, strategy and wisdom, the, the Roman equivalent of Athena, uh, with all the allegories of all the sciences and, uh, and arts. This is the great time for science. This is quite a good time for architecture and then for uh, architecture, of course, for poetry and uh, uh, and philosophy, for the, the intellectuals. 
we really can start talking about the beginning of the Enlightenment with some great minds such as Sir Isaac Newton, uh, here portrayed by Godfrey Neller, and uh, John Locke, a philosopher, also here portrayed by Godfrey Neller. Uh, so uh, we have those great minds, great intellectuals, not really yet called scientists, the, uh, the um, contemporary term was natural philosophy, but uh, this is basically the beginning of the Enlightenment that will really take flight in the 18th century, with some ideas being elaborated on, like this idea of man's dominance over nature. Uh, unfortunately, the Stuart curse, yes, childlessness, or actually all those children dying either at birth or shortly after. Uh, so uh, Mary died leaving no, leaving no heirs. William did not marry again. He lived for a few more years and then died. Uh, so uh, the last of the Stuarts in this uh, uh, in this. Um, epoch you might say is younger sister of Mary Queen Anne uh, so uh, a very I would say unfortunate monarch uh, first of all because she tried to have all those children here we have uh, uh, here we have uh, two portraits of her one as a princess another one from the studio of Godfrey Neller uh, with her son William, Duke of Gloucester, the child that survived the longest. He died very shortly after his 11th birthday. Uh, you may be familiar with the, uh, with the film, The Favourite. Uh, it's not exactly 100% true, but there were female favourites, there were close female um, friendships, there has been a rumor that perhaps she was lesbian. Well, this has been rumored about the, uh, the Stuarts a little bit, like James the First, that perhaps he was gay, and perhaps even William of Orange had some leanings in in this direction. So we will never know. What is important uh, is that uh, definitely there were female favorites, the very powerful ladies of the court at the court of, uh, of Queen Anne and her favorite, absolutely closest companion, closest friend, perhaps even rumored to be a lover, although she herself denied, uh, was the Duchess of Marlborough, the wife of the great military commander uh, who fought a very successful campaign in France in the name of Queen Anne. And as a special present, as a special gift, uh, the Marlboroughs were given a beautiful, huge palace. This is a UNESCO site. Um, I include a drawing, an image of this palace because it's so huge I couldn't find a good photograph that would include the entire palace. You may want to Google it. The name is Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire. Uh, Blenheim was one of the places where the military victory was uh, uh, was won by the Duke of Marlborough. So him being this great commander and his wife being the closest confidant of the Queen, they were given this splendid, huge, I've been there, it's absolutely humongous, uh, palace uh, as a special royal gift, designed by one of the great architects of the day, John Van Brouw. Uh, this is the family seat of the powerful Marlborough family. This is actually the place of birth of, uh, of Winston Churchill. So this is a little bit of trivia. So with the death of Queen Anne and no children surviving her, there was a need to introduce a new dynasty on the throne because the parliament really didn't want this young James III, the Catholic French branch of the Stuarts on the throne. The Scottish uh, subjects um, sometimes objected that there was a strong support for the Jacobite cause, uh, cause in Scotland, but uh, the parliament prevailed and the new dynasty, the Hanoverians, the closest Protestant relatives to the Stuarts, actually quite far in the line of succession, I think they were like 50s place 
uh, on the line of the succession to the throne, but all the, the uh, people closer to the throne were Catholics. So we have at the beginning of the 18th century, with the, uh, with the death of Queen Anne, we have the new dynasty, the Hanoverians, all those kings named George, so we will enter the Georgian period. And uh, this is uh, uh, the, the moment when last year the pandemic started. So I started uploading the videos, but if you feel tempted to watch ahead, don't do this because I will be uh, re-uploading them. I will be adding the illustrations. I couldn't do it last year. I can now. So please wait and uh, uh, you'll have the uh, new and upgraded version with all the illustrations uh, inside the video. You can still find them on Moodle uh, with all the extra materials, the links uh, to, to extra documentaries and whatever, uh, plus the quizzes. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you in the live meetings as well. So that's it for this week and thank you.